All right, so the last thing I wanted to do is um, show you how to generate the table without a calculator because you are going to need to know how to get the table by plugging in and not just by looking at the calculator once. So the ones I'm going to go over are number three here and then number six on the decay. The ones that are being shifted, not just the ones that have an A and a B value. So for number three, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, they all start with the base though. So you look at the base part. So we're plugging in these exponents and actually I'm going to add the three at the bottom. So I'm going to add a three down here and maybe even a four, but three for now. Okay, so we're plugging each one of these as exponents to the base of two. So you just look at the base first. So two to the three is eight, two squared is four, two to the one is two, zero is always one, and then the negatives are the reciprocal. So what's the reciprocal of two? That's a half. What's the reciprocal of two squared? Well, two squared is four. The reciprocal of four is one fourth. So you make the table for the base first. That's this part. Then you multiply that number by the a, which in this case the a is the negative one. So times negative one. All multiplying negative one is gonna do is make these negative. So negative, negative half, negative one, negative two, negative four, negative eight. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and graph this one right here. And negative two is one fourth. So just barely above the x-axis. Or sorry, negative one fourth. So negative two is at negative one fourth, which is below it. Negative one is at negative half. Zero is at negative one. Uh oh, I might not be able to fit it here. One is at negative two. So these I might need to move. Um, or I can, I can show you how to get it over here with the calculator or with the other table. Okay, so what's gonna happen is from here, you just take these points and you shift them according to H and K. So first, let's do the asymptote. The asymptote is the K value. So it's gonna be right here at 12. So then I'm gonna take each of these points and make them go left two and up 12. So taking this one, left two, one, two, up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This one, left two, up, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. These are going to be in the middle. Left two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in the middle here. And then the one fourth is going to be here. Okay, so I know this part's going to flatten out. So when you do it this way, you're always going to use this formula or these numbers right here and then shift them according to H and K. So this is one way you can do it. The other way is actually by plugging in these numbers. So here, the number that you want the zero to be is whatever the H is. So in this case, the H is negative two. So that's the one you want in the middle. That's where zero goes. So here, this zero point, it was at zero negative one, but it went to negative two eleven is here. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to get that number algebraically. So here negative two, then this would be negative one zero. I'll go ahead and put uh, one here. Negative three, negative four. Okay, so the other way you can do it is using the table here, you can actually plug into the numbers to get the y values. So here, if I plug in negative two, negative two, 
Well then that's going to give me negative 2 plus 2 is 0 as the exponent. And then I have a negative in front and a plus 12. Because you have to do order of operations. So you do the zero, the exponent first. 2 to the 0 is 1. Then you make it negative, And then you add 12. So negative 1 plus 12 is 11. And that's what this point is right here. Um, so I already know where these are going to be. This negative 1 is going to be at 10. Uh, let's go ahead and figure out the 0 one, because that one we actually couldn't fit. Here, this one was at 11.5. And this one was at 11.75. But let's figure out the 0 one, that way I can get another point. So if I plug in 0 here, 0 plus 2 is 2. So I'm going to square 2, make it negative, and then add 12. So you do exponents first. So you square it first, which is 4, and then make it negative, and then plus 4. So notice you're not doing negative 2 squared, because negative 2 squared is positive 4. We're not squaring the negative. We're only squaring the 2, and then the negative in the front makes the number negative. So negative 4 plus 12 is 8. So at 0, we're going to have 8. So the y-intercept is going to be right here at 8. <coughs> Let's do one more, because I think I can fit one more point down here. Um, so if I plug in, the next one would be a 1. If I plugged in 1 here, let me kind of erase this one. If I plug in 1, then 1 plus 2 is 3. So I'm going to do 2 to the third. That's going to give me 8 make the 8 negative, and then add 12. So negative 8 plus 12 is just 4. So at 1, it should be 4. 1, it should be 4. So again, this is how I get the rest of my graph by plugging in. Okay, so you have two ways you can graph these by hand. You can um, do the parent function with the base, and then just shift it on the graph, or you can actually plug in these numbers um, and using order of operations, figure them out. Okay, so we're going to do one more word and we're doing, again, parent function and plugging in. So jumping to number six, because that's the only other one with the transformation. <coughs> okay, so I recommend the parent function one, but if you want to do the other one, you can. Um, by plugging in values. You really only need three numbers. So once you have three, that should be good enough. So I call this one the shortcut, because you don't have to do as much plugging in. But you don't have to use it. Okay, so here we're going to plug in these exponents with the base of a half. So here when we square a half, I'm just going to do this in black. If we square a half, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4. You square both the top and the bottom. Anything to the 1 power is itself. Anything to the 0 power is 1. Here, what's the reciprocal of a half? That's what negatives mean is reciprocal. Reciprocal of a half is 2. And then here, I take the reciprocal and then I square it. So the reciprocal of half is 2. 2 squared is 4. Um, we might be able to do, let's just try negative 3. So 1 half to the negative 3. The reciprocal of 1 half is 2. 2 to the third is 8. We might be able to fit that one. I don't know. Um, okay, so now we take each of these and we multiply it by the A. So multiply it by 3. So here, this one is, well here, this one is 24, so no, I'm not going to be able to fit that one. So when I multiply this one by 3, I get negative, tw or get 12, sorry, not negative. So just 12 here. This one is 6, this one is 3, this one is 
and this one is 0.75. All right, so at negative two, we're up at 12. At negative one, we're at six. At one or zero, we're at three. And again, I know that's true because that's the y-intercept and that, that's the a value. At one, it's 1.5 and at two, it's 0.75. Okay, so I'm not going to graph this one. Oops, that looks like it's on it. This is not my final graph. This is like the intermediate one. So I'm going to kind of make it like dashed. Because this is just this part right here. I need to shift it as well. So the minus 2 and the plus 4 means I take these points and I make them go right, 2, and up, 4. So take this one right, two, up, one, two, three, four, at 16. So this one, negative two, I know is going to be at 16. This one, right, two, up, one, two, three, four. This one's going to be at 10. Right, two, up, one, two, three, four, seven. Right, two, one, two, three, four, kind of in the middle here and then 0 0.75. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I know my asymptotes, the k value, which is 4. So I'll draw your horizontal asymptote at 4. And then you connect them. It's decreasing, it's dk, so you go down to here, and then you make it flatten out. So flatten out towards the horizontal asymptote. So the one, when I move the one here to here, this one is 5.5, and then this one is 4.75. So I know those are going to be my y values, uh, but using the other method, I do want to show you how to get them by hand. So again, I don't need any of this. When you do the plugging in method, you don't really use the transformation idea. So you start with this number in the middle. The opposite of this one is positive 2. So is this at 2, 7? 2 is at 7. So that one is at one. Then you go up 3, 4. And then you go down 1, 0. Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to get it for a few numbers. I'm not going to do all of them. We already know the numbers. But I want to show you how to do it by plugging in. So let's say we plug in the 0. I do want to keep that one. So here if I plug in 0, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. So I'm going to do 1 half to the negative 2. I do that part first. So the negative is going to flip it around to 2 over 1. And then I'm going to square it. So 2 squared is 4. And then you multiply that by 3. And then add 4. So 3 times 4 is 12, plus 4, 12 plus 4 is 16, and that's what I got here. Check. Okay, I mean, you really don't even need to show the work for this part. You can do this in your head, um, but just know how to do it. So here, if you plug in 1, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. That just means the reciprocal of this. So what's the reciprocal of a half? Well, that's 2 times 3 plus 4. So 2 times 3 is 6 plus 4 is 10. And that's where this one comes from. Okay, so this is just being able to graph these without um, a calculator. So for sure, you'll be, you're going to need to do the A value. Occasionally, I'll throw in an H and a K that you have to move it. Again, I don't care whether you shift it or whether you plug in to get the points, um, as long as you can get those points one of the two ways. Again, without calculators. And for sure, in pre-cal, you're going to need it for the, cal uh, for the graphing parts, because you need to be able to generate these graphs uh, without plugging them in.